God bless you. It's good to see uh, those of you that are here, but we certainly do appreciate our, our church members, those of you who are viewing us now on live stream. We just want to try to encourage us. These are some uh, terrible times that we're living in, but we serve a God that can do anything but fail, and we want to trust him. I'm reminded, I'm reminded, John was out on the island of Patmos. God bless him. Uh, the Bible says while he was out there, uh, he was able to view some things. And the Bible says in, in, the, in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, John said, and I, I saw in his right hand uh, uh, of him uh, that sat on the throne, uh, John said, uh, I, I saw a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And he said, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, no man uh, uh, neither in the earth or under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look therein. And because of that, John, the apostle, experienced what most people are experiencing this morning because of the coronavirus, he, some great anxiety. And the Bible said he began to weep. So he began to weep. And his reason for weeping was because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither look in it. That caused the great anxiety. And then one of the elders, thank God, God has always got a remnant. One of the elders said unto him, Weep not. He said, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. I want to tell you that today, this thing may have a grip on society, on every nation, but when God gets ready, you're moving. When God gets ready. So listen, uh, trust in the Lord. Solomon say with all your heart, lean not on your understanding, and he will direct your way. God bless you. If you have your Bible, I'm going to ask you to turn... Uh, I, I had promised that I was, wasn't going to speak long just to say something that will encourage us. Uh, but, but every once in a while, our spirits have to be renewed. Let me tell you, we are, some, we, we are God's children, the church. Uh, I want to read uh, just a little bit to you or read a scripture, maybe perhaps try to develop a little bit of this. in from Romans chapter 8. From Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. In verse number 35, 36, and 37 for this morning. Where it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thou sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slow. Then all says, but nay in all things, or nay in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Pray with me and I will come back. And kind Father in heaven, we're grateful for this privilege you've extended to us this morning as we've come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray that you would just be close to us and we're thankful for uh, you being our God and being beside us. We're thankful that you've provided a way for us to be reconciled back to thee. We ask, Lord, that you be close to us as we endeavor into the study. Help us to extract those things that we can make applicable in our lives 
be better people, have better confidence, have more faith to serve you better than we did on yesterday. Lord, we love you and appreciate you so much. Pray that you be with us in Jesus' precious name. We humbly ask this because he is our Savior and how he's our mediator. Amen. In verse 37, Paul said, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors in these things. Romans, this book, is a typical outburst of every child of God. In Christ, we find uh, Paul writes and sets this up. The whole uh, eighth chapter of the book, Paul begins to set us up to help us to understand that we, we are something special. In verse number one of eight, uh, chapter 8, Paul says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So Paul said, we don't have any condemnation if we are in Christ, walking after the Spirit and not after the flesh. That, 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 that assures us uh, the word there, there is, that, that gives us the, the, the assurance that the argument on the points that Paul made in chapter 7 are now at end. Paul said to put this to an end. There is now, therefore, no condemnation. That was applicable then, and it's applicable to us to this day. If we're in Christ and we're walking not after the Spirit, but after the flesh. And in verse number 2 of that same chapter, Paul shows us, he says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made us free from the law of death. Paul said, we are free now. There, there is no guilt. We have no guilt. We have no reason to, 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 to stand down. Paul said, we are free in Christ. And goes on to say, Paul, in, in verse, verse number 9, uh, in verse number 9 of that text, Paul said, but you are not in the flesh. We're in the Spirit, capital S. And if we so be in the Spirit of God dwelling in you, now, if any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. Our weaknesses have been exposed and disposed. We still have weaknesses. As long as we live on God's top side of this earth, we're going to have. That's why we need Christ. That's why we are in Christ, and that's why we need Christ. But Paul says in 37, he says, but, but coffee, we're more. He said, we're more than conquerors. And I want you to know, to be a conqueror, you've got to be involved in a conquest. Conquest is this life. We can be more than conquerors. The things that we are struggling with, the issues that are about to overtake us now, we can be more than conquerors. Not by ourselves, but in Christ. Those, those issues, uh, those sinful issues that, uh, Drop and say, Paul said, we are more than conquerors. And therefore, we, we need to stay in and do all that we can. Even in this world, what's, what's happening is the world and Satan, they are just destroying God's people. Paul's in the salute faith, becoming weak in faith. And when we become weak in faith, Satan overtakes us. But to be successful, in Christ, but to be a conqueror in Christ, we don't have to examine God, examine us. Check ourselves, look in the mirror to see if we take inventory and stop depending on ourselves. Jeremiah 10, 23, Jeremiah said, Oh Lord, I know it's not in man that, uh, that well to take his own step. We need to depend on God and not depend on us. We got to stop comparing, comparing ourselves. Comparing. We, we got to stop comparing ourselves to the world. We got to. We got to seek the right sources so that we can be conquerors. You know, athletes. Uh, if, if they don't train, they don't hone their skill. They cannot be success and be conquerors. In the, the you look at the look at the basketball players and the football players. Today. We have to. We have to train ourselves. 
We got to seek the right source so that we can be conquerors. The source is not, not, not what's in the world. The source is not materialistic. The source is God's word. We can stand on the word of God. When everything else is being knocked down and pushed over, the word will stand forever. Didn't Jesus say that? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. It's going to stand or is standing, I should say, right now during this time that all of us are experiencing this anxiety with this virus. So we have to depend on God if we're going to. And, and let me tell you, depending on God, even though God hasn't responded the way that you want him to respond it, he's perfect. In Matthew chapter 9, and that's an interesting, interesting dialogue there. Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, you have the story of the two blind men uh, in verse 27. When those guys, and I'm paraphrasing, when they hollered out, uh, Son of man! Uh, they wanted to be healed. They wanted their sights. Jesus didn't respond to them. He kept going. Uh, they followed him. He went in the house. They came in the house behind him. Here is an intriguing statement that gets me. When they, they said, we'd like to re receive our sight. Can you bless us to receive our sight? And Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do it. He asked them, he put it back on them, do you believe that I'm able to do it? Sometimes we ask in God, but we don't believe that God is able to do what he says he can do. Sometimes in our prayers, and they aren't they one answered because we're asking God to do something that we don't believe that he's able to do. Let me tell you, Jesus, God sent his son, Jesus gave his life, he shed his blood, and that, if we are obedient to that, his blood will cleanse us from our sins. And if we stay connected to the source, the source will deliver us. Do we believe that he can do what he says he can do? I believe that with all my heart. We are more than conquerors. We have to learn to stay in the will of the Lord. And let me tell you, rewards follow that. We want to be rewarded just like I was talking about these anxieties today. These things will pass but because we are more than conquerors, not ourselves, but what Jesus has promised us and what God has said. And so we have to stand into that. We have to do whatever it is that God has commanded us to do, starting out by through our obedience. Someone said obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, folk want to want want to be rewarded, but no, nobody want to obey. Amen. So, so, so he said, well, obedience is better than sacrifice. In these trying times, we have to learn to re revisit what, what it is that God has said. Go back and stand on his promises. And every once in a while, we can talk to God about his promises. Lord, you promised this. You promised if I live this way, if I kept myself this way, if I obey that you promised. And he's told us in Hebrews, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even this, with all this going on today, God has his promise still stands. I'll never leave you or forsake you. But you know what? We have to stand on that promise. That's the rewards. That's the rewards. That's the rewards of serving a good God. And so we have to hold on to uh, and build our faith. Now, the, there is a reality to being victorious. So we say we're more than conquerors. The reality of that is that you're going to have to go through something. You can't have no victory. You don't go through anything. How are you going to be victorious if you never played in the game? You, 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 and and, and playing, playing in the game, and you're going to get some lumps, and you're going to get some bruises, and you're going to get knocked down, you're going to have to shed a tear every once in a while. But just remember this, that God's got your back. As long as you stand on the promises of God and you've been obedient, no matter what you go through in life, the trials and the tribulations will be real. But stand on them. 
stand on the promises of God. You cannot, that's the reality of you wanting to be a conqueror. Everybody want to be a conqueror, but don't want to go through nothing. No, you've got to go through something to be a conqueror. Have some victory. Have victory in Jesus. Uh, in Paul states in Romans chapter 15, uh, verse 57, he said, but, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. He gives us the victory. You, you, and not, not, not so much that you've earned it, but your trust He's delivered us. And then there is the rim, the rim of our conquest. Paul is saying that more than conquerors in these things. Most of us have the idea that the victory occurs when we are living lives that are free from trouble. That's not the victory. We think that the victory occurs when there's no afflictions. We don't have no headaches with life. No, that's not the victory. That's the rim. Paul says that the reality is Something far different than what we think it is. Even today, reality is real. Some things you go to, they strengthen your faith. And the truth of the matter, all of us sitting here this morning, all of you uh, uh, in live streaming, we're experiencing that to this day. we either going through something, already in it, or coming out of it. But I want to tell you something. The victory is yours if you keep your eyes on Jesus. Trust and obey. God is good. And God is able to deliver us even when we don't think that he is. Tribulations are just a small castaway. God is able to take care of us. And even as one of the elders said this morning, this is what we're going through now. Our country is enduring now. This is, this is God's will. It's his will. We may not understand it, but I want to tell you something. That Paul wrote Romans 8, 28, Paul said that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. And if we can just settle under that, if we can just settle, rest, understand, every once in a while, you're going to have to step, take a step back. View where you are. Take inventory of yourself. Look at your faith. See where you are. And let God work through you. Uh, we, we, we're fighting the good fight. A lot of times going through everything that we experience in life, God is just refining us. He's just refining us. Remember Jeremiah said, Lord, you're the, you're the, you're, you're, you're the problem. I'm just the clay. Reshape me. Uh, refine me. A lot of us are just being refined. And day-to-day -day living, day-to-day -day tasks, day-to-day -day challenges that we come in contact with, that these are just helping to us to refine our faith, helping us to be what the Lord would have us to be. You remember in reading in, in Romans 8, uh, before we get to these, uh, Paul said, uh, and in verse 38, uh, Paul said, well, I'm persuaded, I'm convinced. He said, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come. That's a mouthful. He said, nor heights, nor depths, nor other creatures shall be able to separate me from the love of God. So all I'm trying to convince you this, this morning, church, is to hold on and hold out. Don't let Satan, Satan steal your joy. Because where do you go from there? Where do you go from there? You, you, remember, you remember the story in John chapter 6, around verse 66, after Jesus had taken care of all of the physical needs, and that's what folk are looking for. Jesus taking care of the physical needs of all of those the folk, that, that, that multitude that was following him. And once he took care of their physical needs, the Bible said they turned and walked no more. And he turned to his disciples uh, and said, Will you all go to? Peter spoke and said, Lord, who are we going to? You, 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 you have the words of eternal life. Where are we going? I want to tell you today, it's still applicable. You have nowhere to turn but the Lord. Trust him and obey him. Where are you going to turn when you turn away from the Lord? Satan is going to steal you. He's already stole your joy, and he's not going to return anything to you. All he's doing, the Lord is refining our lives. Just as a goldsmith heats ore to improve the 
uh, to remove the impurities. God uses trials and afflictions of life uh, to help us, uh, to mold us, to give us stability. And let me tell you, in this day and time with everything that's going on in our lives, we need some stability. And it's in God's word. He's ranking us. He's ranking our lives. When, we fin when he finishes with us, will we be less ourselves and more like him or more like ourselves and less like him? Which way should we be? We should be more like him. You're going to have victory. You're going to have be, have be more than conquerors. We should be less of us and more like him. Jesus said, Matthew 16, 24, he said, except a man deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow Jesus. He expects us to get, be less of us and more like him. If you're here, that's what he's looking for this morning. Sometimes, church, I want you to understand that even though we're more than conquerors, the process of being more is always painful. The process involves challenges. But maybe you don't want to read, but they involve challenges. Jesus himself had to learn this. You know, even going to the cross, the Hebrew writer, though he was a son, said, yet he learned obedience. How? Through the things which he suffered. So, so he's, God was honing his son. We're learning. We're learning. Growing up as a boy, I learned. And you, you've learned now and still learning now that you're adults. Things that you suffer, you know not to go back to those again. And then there's the reason, last but not least. Paul tells us the only reason that we are victorious in life is through him that loved us. Victory does not lie within our own selves. Victory alone rests in Jesus. And if we're going to experience or start experiencing Maybe you started out and then started running and Satan just beat you and sin will beat you down. It'll wear you down, wear your faith out. You, you're subject to give up. Let me tell you, you can always go back and renew your faith in Jesus. Go back and ask and recommit. Recommit yourself. Rededicate your lives to the Lord. Just tell Satan, move out of the way. I'm going home. He won't move unless you ask him. And even then, he's not going to move. You're going to have to encourage him. And you encourage him by studying, by standing on God's word, trusting him, saying, this is God, and I'm going to take this. This is what's going to cause me to be successful, trusting in God. Trusting in God. If we stand on that and not move, we don't have to worry about all of the other little arrangements that we have to make in life. God will take care of that. And in the final consummation of all things, we can go home and live with Jesus. That doesn't sound like much now. Most people think, no, that doesn't sound. What about today? What about doing this? What about dealing with that? Let me tell you something. In the final consummation, to be just like this virus, nobody can see a cure for it. First anxiety, and then we're afraid distrust, let me tell you, when the Lord returns, the Bible says, look, God knows them that are his, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. There's going to be benefits. You're going to be rewarded. All I say is stand on the Lord, trust him, and obey him. And I thank you so much this morning for your attention. Pray that something was said that caused you to fight the good fight of faith. God bless you. God love you. And if you need us, call us for prayer. Come in. We'll always make ourselves available. So much here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ in Jacksonville, Florida. Let us stand. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Well, you know I told Satan, get the mind. Victory today is mine. Joy, joy, say, joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy, joy, today is mine. Well,
you know I know said I 